This video will review radioactive dating as part of Chapter 6 in Earth Science. Radioactive dating is a process that scientists use to determine the exact or absolute age of a material. This is possible because isotopes of atoms, an isotope is an unstable version of an atom, they break down, or what we call decay, at a very specific rate. That speed of decay never changes. So scientists can use the amount that has decayed to figure out how long it has been decaying and therefore determine how long ago it started decaying. So kind of by working backwards, scientists can look at the amount of material remaining and come up with an exact age of when it started to decay. The only chart on this that's useful in our reference table is the one here that is on the first page of the Earth Science Reference Tables. It lists the four radioactive isotopes, their disintegration, so what atoms they turn into, and then the half-life. How long does it take for carbon-14 to become nitrogen-14, or for half of the atoms there to do that? And then it gives you the ages for each of those four isotopes. It's important to know that a half-life is the amount of time it takes for one half of the material to decay. Now, it's not one half of the entire rock, for example, but one half of the carbon-14 atoms that are within that rock. So there's nothing you can observe with your eyes that you, can, you can't see the decay happen. This can only be determined by, by a detailed analysis of what the rock is made of, and the ratio between the two different types of atoms that are in the, in, in the material. So by comparing the amount of carbon-14 with the amount of nitrogen-14, you can determine the number of half-lives that have occurred, and therefore the age of the rock. So here are those ages broken out into you know, standard numbers. And you can see there's something very interesting, that carbon, 5,700 years, is the only one that is anywhere remotely close to being you know, a short time period. The other three, potassium, uranium, and rubidium, are measured in the billions. So right off the bat, you know that, that anything recent will have to be measured using carbon. The, these other three atoms, they haven't decayed enough to be helpful for very new or very young or recent materials. Now, there's a limit to that as well. Carbon-14 is good, um, but it's only good for about 50,000 years, about 10 or so half-lives before there's not enough carbon left to be useful in the dating process. So again, radioactive decay is when you take an unstable atom it emits energy and particles until it has reached a state that is stable as a new atom. So when the material starts, there'll be 100% of its unstable material in it. After one half-life, there'll be 50% remaining. After two half-lives, that gets cut down again in half, so you have 25%. After three half-lives, what was remaining gets cut in half. And after that, what gets remaining gets cut in half again, and so on and so on and so on. Keep getting cut in half and half and half and half and half until you practically have almost nothing left. So here's another way to look at it. If we have this box, right, we could take this orange box and cut it in half. That would represent one half-life. If we then cut the remaining white material in half again, that would represent two half-lives. If we wanted to cut the material a third into a third half-life, this half would be decayed. If there was a fourth half-life, half of the white would be decayed. If there was a fifth half-life, half of whatever is remaining would be decayed. Six half-lives, half would be get it would decayed and so on. This can go on and on and on. And you end up with very, very little remaining 
material after only a short number of half-lives. And here it is in numbers, right? So zero half-lives, you have 100% of your isotope remaining, 0% has decayed. After one half-life, it's 50, 50, two half-lives, three, four, so on. These numbers get, get, get keep, keep getting cut in half. These numbers are whatever it takes to get to 100. So 50 plus 50 is 100. 25 plus 75 is 100. 12 and a half plus 87 and a half is 100. Because you always need all the atoms present. The atoms are not disappearing. They're just changing. So then when you look at years, here's what it looks like for carbon-14's half-lives measured in years. The first half-life, 5,700. The two half-lives, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 half-lives, 39,000 years. So to summarize the main ideas here, isotopes are unstable atoms. Isotopes decay into stable atoms. The speed of decay never changes. There are several isotopes available. Geologists use this information to determine the absolute age of a material. They compare the ratio of original isotope with decay product and determine the number of half-lives. Using the number of half-lives, they can determine the number of years. I hope this short video was helpful. I'll see you in class.